Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. We're all here. Let's get started. Uh, <laughs> I've been working on the intros, and I think that's the best way just to go straight into it. Let's do it. it. Uh, by everyone, I mean Kyle Shrum, Joe Courtney, Ashley Hicks, or the only girl in the galaxy, or EO3. Yes. Uh huh. Just looking at names on Zoom here. Do, when, we, <laughs> when we do this on YouTube, when we publish it to YouTube, are the names on, on us? I'd can't recall yes oh okay. man that's even better yeah time. so awesome <laughs> i've not all been right. utilizing this <laughs> where's that Doesn't boot matter. button all right here we go <laughs> the study that we're covering today is auto regulatory progressive training compared to linear programming on muscular strength endurance and body composition in recreationally active males so i've been thinking of doing this for a while now i'm kind of calling myself out on it one time we're going to get on the podcast and I'm going to read a study you guys didn't prepare for as the study we're doing for the day. That's and just, rude. just, <laughs> cool. just to see if you didn't, if you even catch it, it's not like, I think you'd be super thrown off. I think you guys just probably don't even read the study name because neither do I. Um, up. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't normally read these study names until we get here. Like I read the study, but these study mm-hmm. names, I'm like, Oh, this is yeah. the long, r- ridiculous title. They gave this study. Would you honestly notice? I would not. I'm, if you I'm, said the wrong study name, it would probably make my heart skip a couple beats, yes. Because I have it pulled up when you start reading it. Yeah, I don't ever read the title until we actually start <laughs> recording, but I read the entire study, if if that makes sense. Because I, I think would automatically assume that I had read the wrong study, and I would freak out. <laughs> I would not assume that you were making a mistake. I would mis- assume that I made a mistake. Exactly, because Jared it. doesn't make mistakes. So that's why oh, I would wow. be like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. Uh, big picture, what they did in the study, uh, it says auto regulatory progressive training. So they just kind of let people regulate themselves. We've talked about auto regulation a lot when it comes to rest times, uh, recovery, training in general, like moving days around. We've taught, uh, talked a lot about this auto regulation. And I love talking about the topic because it should comfort any garage gym athlete. Um, you know, who wants to move days around, who isn't having the best day or whatever, you can typically still see results is what a lot of the auto regulation stuff uh, comes up with Uh, versus linear programming. So linear programming, very common. Um, We do a lot of it too. Uh, So it's just, uh, everybody knows what a linear progression is. If my son would know how to do linear progression, um, if I asked him to put together a strength workout, because it's just like, okay, if you listed five pounds this week, how much do you lift next week? Mm -hmm seven pounds, 10 pounds, right? Okay. You, you figured out linear progression. Like it's that simple and you can do it with almost anything. Um, so they were, they're 24 men with at least six months of resistance training experience who completed the study. Um, and we can get into the exact, um, style of training. I thought they were actually quite different. So the fixed linear progression training, they just increased five pounds each week. Um, in their in their strength training resistance training uh but it what's that five percent five percent each week what did i say five Five pounds pounds. i never make mistakes (laughs) five percent increase oh i read the wrong study again yeah (laughs) yeah it's it's basically the same but the study i read they did five pounds so you guys must be off (laughs) um and then it says the apre so the auto regulation people perform sets Uh, set four to failure and research suggested the load used for set four based upon performance in set three further performance on set four was used to adjust load for the following session. And that's about as detailed as I want to get into it right now before we all kind of like 
start picking it apart and, and what our thoughts were. Overall, both groups improved is the biggest thing I want everyone to know. Everyone improved. All right. There's not necessarily one better than the other um, as far as like seeing results. So you can, if you can stick to a linear progression, you'll still see results. Uh, but the auto regulation group increased leg press and chest press strength 7% and 9.8% respectively, more than the fixed linear progression group. So it did edge it out, uh, but I have thoughts on that. So let's get into it. What did you all think? Yeah, everyone's a winner, but the APRE group is the, the winningest winner. Of right. These. Um, so the, this is one reason why the, my first thought was is one reason why we, um, don't prescribe weights on tempo because it's kind of a go by feel self-regulate to make sure you're getting the right intent and hitting those, uh, the right, the right tempo, uh, like the, the, the whatever the, the, the count is for and the right reps so that you, you are hitting that domain. Cause it's hard for us to tell you what to do for those. So you would, would do your sets of what, you know, the four second decrease and then up. Uh, for five reps, you know, it's, it's hard to say what you can do that efficiently for that. And then you can all, also, um, regulate that on your own as you go through your, your sets. So that's why tempo and a lot of people say, you know, how much should I be lifting for this? Well, that's something you have to kind of figure out on your own. And while most strength, like the main lifts, we're going to give you percentages to base it off of. We even say like that at times for fluctuating, especially if it's like it's a dynamic effort, at 75% and you're not going very dynamic, then you can back it off a little bit to get the stimulus that we want. So we've had some flexibility in this, but I think as I was reading more, I think it would be cool to go even deeper into this, into um, a sort of self-regulation load um, to explore more in programming, which we could talk about more when we get more into their set specifics. And then like accessory work as well. Uh, that's another opportunity we give people to regulate on yourself. But uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to see the differences in them. I know the main thing was that because of how the sets were, were, were uh, panned out, the uh, linear progression set, they're handcuffed to how much load they're, they're going to do. They are on a set load, but the APRE has more flexibility to, if they can take more load, then they're going to have more load and therefore more load typically mean, you know, you're lifting more, and will typically lead to greater strength. So that's one big advantage to this, but that's which you can use uh, to your advantage, uh, depending on what, how you want to train. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say this point, even though I see it on everybody's notes, but I found it funny that they trained back squat the entire time, but they tested on the leg press. They didn't train on the leg press, but they tested one rep max and max reps at 75% on the leg press, which I found funny and weird. And I wasn't really exactly sure why, but Area over strength. Yeah. Um, so that's my first uh, rundown through, but uh, Kyle, what you got? Yeah, I thought the, the leg press thing was strange as well. Um, I did, because that, that's kind of one of our, that's one of our notes pretty much every time we talk about a study that, that measures lower body strength, right? Because most of them use the leg press and we're just like, well, that's just what they use, you know, but we'd, we'd love to see more barbells, but they use the leg press. But then this one, like, Use the barbell during the training, but it used the leg press during the testing. Don't really understand why, but it, it's just something to note and something I, um, something I, I noticed and thought was funny that they did that. Um, but I just think uh, I was looking at the the rate of perceived effort for the different groups, and um, I, this is something that's that I that I always pay attention to if they if they track it in a study. Um, just the rate of, because I think that it plays a big role in people's training and, um, the, the APRE group, the auto-regulated group had higher rate of perceived effort across the board. So for every session that they did, it was, it was higher across the board. Now the, the RPE went up for both groups over the eight weeks, which it should, cause your weight's going up. Um, workouts are getting harder. Sessions are getting harder, but the auto-regulated group had a higher RPE each time. And so I think that just kind of goes to the mindset that it takes to do this kind of, this kind of training, because it's like, like Jared said, linear progression, just straight linear progression is it's a tried and true method. People have been using it for years and years and years and years. Like you're going to get stronger using linear progression, just slowly adding weight to the bar. Um, but it's also, it doesn't take a lot of brain power, right. To do it. It's just like, this is how much I'm adding this week put it on the bar, do the reps. Right. Um, 
but the auto regulation group, it takes a little bit more effort, especially mentally. Um, and you're thinking about, especially if you're thinking about the jumps they were making from set to set in the auto regulated group, um, they're using a six rep max instead of a one rep max They're Um, and so the, the jumps they were making in weight each time, it's like that can really play, play with your mind when you're doing that kind of session. And so to me, it's just kind of, um, it's a little bit more mentally taxing as well, not just physically taxing, but a little more mentally taxing as well. When you see that you're making these big of jumps, um, during your training session. So that was something that was interesting to me as well was the RPE difference between the two groups, Ashley. Um, so personally, I kind of love this, uh, just because of, again, <clears throat> kind of how my training is going, I have to take some things down, um, intensity wise, but if we look at the numbers, like I know we talked about that, obviously linear progression, obviously increased as well, but I mean, auto, the auto regulatory beat out the linear progression every time in my, I don't know, for all the testing standards that they had, um, they did test out one rep max, as they said, but it was pre-study, correct? And then they used that percentage of the one rep max, I think it was 85%, to then that was going to be their six rep max. Yeah. Um, I think they tested it again at the mid and adjusted. Yeah, they did it at sure. four weeks. And yeah. then they did it at post-study as well. Yeah. So they did that for both. So um, <laughs> What I like about this though, is if you are, you know, if you're training, if you're one of our athletes and we're, we've got something prescribed, that's like 85% or 90%, you know, that's something that's kind of on the heavier side or moderately heavier side. And if something has changed for you, you know, I guess, um, I'm going to kind of jump into my killing comfort, but my thing is, is if you're 85% and you're like, this is not as strenuous as it is for me, I would say maybe kind of check that load and see maybe that day that you can actually like jump up and, you know, add, whether it be five, 10 pounds, I'm not saying do something crazy, but make sure that you're kind of checking in. Like, is this moderately heavy for me? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Or what, Je or what Joe was saying, you know, if I'm supposed to be dynamic, can I be dynamic at 75%? If I can't be dynamic at 75% and that's what we're going for, then let me take it down and let me change the number. So I guess for my killing cover, it would just be, don't make the percentages such a strict rule for you um kind of play with it if if you if you can i guess yeah i'm a huge fan of auto regulation um in training i really like this study and most of the ones we pull uh if you've heard me on the podcast say i don't like auto regulation that's in reference to hydration and nutrition i think that you sh those are the only places you a human being should not auto regulate because I don't think that people drink enough water and they won't eat properly if they do auto-regulate, unless you've trained yourself for many years to do so. Um, okay, so my only issue with the study was the volume. Uh, they, the, um, what is it, what are we calling it? The auto-regulatory APRE group, um, the auto-regulation group lifted significantly more volume than the oh, okay. uh, like linear failure. progression. <clears throat> yeah. And, and cause they had these sets where they are going to failure. Um, and so, I mean, when you, when you look at strength training, like if I were to do a linear progression strength training, um, I'm not only looking at the intensity, I'm not going to be like, okay, it's 70% this week, 75% the next week, 80% the, the next week. I'm also looking at total volume. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do in a wave is if we lifted 10,000 pounds total in week one, I'm going to make sure that we're over that in week two. And I'm going to make sure we're over that in week three before we deload in the fourth week. That's how we do our programming. And so total volume, when you look at most strength training research uh, in hypertrophy, that's a huge factor in seeing progress mm -hmm. is volume. So while the uh, APRE group outperformed linear progression training, they also lifted a good amount of volume more than the linear progression group. And so that was my only real issue with it. Otherwise, I think they are com kind of comparing apples to apples here. But in my opinion, the best strength programs do both. So we do this in our one man, one barbell program. Jim Windler does it in his program. It's some in the, the West side method. Um, like you, you have these set percentages that you want to hit because to me, those are, 
uh, they're like sanity checks. It's almost like following the science. It's like, Hey, we know if you hit 85% here, you know, this many times you're, you're going to get stronger so on and so forth. But then there's this like auto regulation set, like we typically call the moneymaker method, right? So like in one man, one barbell we'll do, you follow the linear progression, but then on your last set is an auto regulated set. So we, we have a minimum. We say you need to get two reps at 80% here as your minimum, but do as many as you can. Mm -hmm. And so if you can do two, great. That's kind of the cap that that was our expectation for the day. Do two. But if you can do nine, cause you're feeling really good that day, do nine, you know, go, go all in. And so I really feel like combining the two is the best. And that's really more what the APRE was doing in my mind that they, they adjusted a little bit more because they were looking at set three to set four. And then those sets based off this week would uh, change the next week. So they were doing it more than we would in a linear progression with auto regulation. But I do think combining the two is probably the most effective way to go about it because if you're not feeling it that day, like if I was doing one man, one barbell, because I've done, I did a million pounds of, vo of volume in one man, one barbell with just three lifts, only calculating, uh, was it press squat and deadlift with a one man, one barbell. And I think it took me eight or nine months to hit a million pounds of volume. And I did that set every single week with every single lift where I just at this percentage, I do as many reps as I can. And it got incredibly taxing from like a central nervous system standpoint. And so there'd be some weeks where I'm like, the minimum's good. Like two mm -hmm. reps, one rep, whatever, four reps. Like I'm, I'm good with that. I'm not going to do more, but then there'd be other reps, other weeks where like I'm doing 80% of my deadlift for like 14 reps. And so it's just, you know, it, it would all be very week dependent, like week by week dependent. So I think, uh, overall, this should be really good news. If you're following our programming, like Ashley's saying, and you need to make some adjustments, like you're going to be fine because I, I think this is like the third auto regulation study we've covered at least. I know we did one on recovery times. Reps um, and reserve and, has come up. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. like, if you, if you follow a little bit more, of uh, the philosophy or mentality of like live to fight another day. That seems to be the better approach in fitness in every regard. Um, and there's always the, the slippery slope with that, right? Is like, let's not get lazy. Let's still right. do what we need to do. Um, Cause I think that's the only, only downside of that is like giving yourself too much leeway in the other direction. But as long as you're holding yourself to some standard and, and you know, like you're, you're making progress, I think that you're fine. Um, but yeah, well, I think it was a really great study. Well, that's why I talked about like, if it was moderately heavy and it's not moderately heavy for you, then right. go up and wait. <laughs> and that's why, and I've talked about this before. Like, I think 90% of someone's wonder at max is like, it's a fictitious number. It's like, a, <laughs> it, it's, it's not real because you, it, if, if you were on your best day when you hit that 100% number and, and today's not your best day, you didn't sleep that great, you're not hydrated, you haven't eaten any food and you had a fight with your spouse and your kids hate you, you're, uh, wow. you're, one, you're one rep max. Yeah, I just laid on every possible bad thing I can think of. <laughs> uh, but with no, with no significant illness, right? So um, the, that is the only, like, do you think you have this, the same one rep max on that day? Probably not. Right. You probably are going to be a little bit more taxed, you know? And so that's why I think you have to look at those things when you're even calculating your own. And that's why I'm such a huge fan of a training max. I don't think we probably talk about that enough, but I almost exclusively operate on my training max, which is 90% of your one rep max. If anyone was unaware of a training max, um, he knows. <laughs> yeah, just because it keeps you in the game that keeps mm -hmm. you in the game longer. Uh, and then I didn't operate off my training max when I did BCT and well, 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 well. <laughs> uh, I was like, we got to go fast. No We're training max is here. Yeah, it was a bad idea. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, that's all I have to say for killing comfort on this one. Um, if you do have more of that mentality, that's like this hardcore, never skip a day, never make excuses. Like I get it. Like I, there's a lot of that in me, but it's not, science is not, doesn't agree with you. Mm -hmm. And that's how it like, cause if you just left me alone in the gym, I would be more of the hardcore mentality. But when I see the science that says, Hey, if you, if you feel like you should rest, you probably should rest. Once I see <laughs> enough of that scientific data, I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Cause I'm, I'm training smarter here, not just always harder. So if you have that hardcore mentality, um, then just try and back it off when you're really not feeling it and it's going to be okay. It's actually going to be better most of the time from what we've seen in the research. 
So great timing, you know, that we have on this study because, uh, or inadvertently, because hard to kill, three block, and strength are all doing this this next wave. So as the day of this publishes for the next three weeks, we have this last set four plus type thing going on. So if you're on those tracks, you get to actually try it out. We and, planned it, Joe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this wasn't unplanned. Not at all. Yeah. It wasn't accidental. No mistakes are made. So I guess for my killing comfort would be to apply this to your accessory work because although sometimes it can be daunting to have this on your strength work because you know people some of you might want to um are just so focused on the prescribed weight, you know, even though we want you to, to have a little bit of wiggle. And the accessory work is when you really need to you you need to be driving yourself because we can't tell you how much to do and how and how you should be doing it. So you need to like work with what you have and you know, okay, this is 10 reps. And I can probably do this for 15. Maybe I should do a couple of extra reps because I don't have the next size kettlebell up to challenge myself to the 10 or so on and so forth. So accessory work is when you really need to kind of be your own, be your own coach and uh, um, drive yourself and auto regulate yourself because it's, we can't really prescribe for you, especially because like kettlebells and dumbbells and stuff vary so much for what you have as a garage gym athlete. So yeah, apply this to your accessory work. Make sure you are dialed in there as well. Yeah, for my kill and comfort, I just said maximize your training time by using the load specific for you. And we we talk about individualization, our regulation. We talk about it all the time. Um, and it just the science is just proven over and over and over again that you know what we've said here, just individualization wins out, right? Do it like you need to put the mental effort into doing what you can do and so that instead of just like I, I, like i said linear progression is a tried and true method you will get stronger doing it that way but it's also just it's almost kind of the lazy way sometimes especially from a, a mental standpoint of like here's my like here's my sets and reps i'm doing the sets and reps period but you know it's it's also kind of like what jared said you can get in that mindset and you can break yourself like you can hurt yourself if you do that so you know put the extra mental effort into um adapting your training to you and to what you can do um even from a day-to-day -day standpoint not just in a generalized standpoint but from day to day yeah and that's i wish there was an easier way to get into auto regulation with strength training like that there is in um aerobic training or just conditioning because your heart rate is so indicative of whether or not you're hydrated or overly taxed or anything because i forgot what we on hard to kill. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, um, we were doing a bunch of, was it 30 thirties? Um, we just had a lot of, them. Like, it was like, it was like 30, 30 and 60, 60, and then 30, 30. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was doing that and I want sustainability and repeatability, right? Like that's what I, we're always talking about. Uh, but I felt a little bit off that day and it didn't really matter. Um, like I was shooting for sustainability and repeatability on the final, um, set, but it wasn't happening because, I was just too taxed. Mm. Like my, my heart rate was like at 180 on 30 thirties. And I was like, something's not right. You know, like yeah. I'm just, I can't, I can't push any harder here to try and be sustainable and <laughs> repeatable because <laughs> I'm already, I'm already up there. And so I just lowered my meter expectation by about 10 and then everything kind of regulated itself. It was like, okay, you can maintain this new low standard and your heart rate will be kind of where you want it to be. And so I do a lot of auto-regulation. It's super easy to do with heart rate. Uh, it's just harder to do with strength training because I do think it takes a certain level of experience to be able to say, I don't feel like going heavy today. Because if you're brand new, you've never done strength training, you probably just should stick to at least like a four-week cycle of some sort of strength program with no modification and just get it done, right? Like just do it. Operate at your training max if you want, if you max at the beginning. But like, let's not let's not vary until you get some experience under your belt. But if you have lifted for more than a cycle, I would call, I, I would say you probably know enough now to be able to auto -reg regulate your strength training is just what a good day and a bad day is. Yeah. All right. Uh, we can move on here. It's a topic for today, Joe. It's kind of your idea. Just my, my thing. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So it is the better human Friday a week. And I believe as of publishing this, it will be live. Question? I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> we'll put a question mark on the teleprompter. I'll read anything. Uh, 
No, because uh, this is published on Monday. We typically do it for four days on, like, right after Thanksgiving, like actual Black Friday. Right. Um, so you have four days to prepare, five days to prepare, whenever you watch and listen to this. Yeah, we actually have gotten questions about it all year, um, here and there, like sporadically. So we do Better Human Friday once a year, uh, starts on Black Friday and runs through Cyber Monday and you can be a part of it. We have a lot of different things that you can get access to. Uh, you can just go to garagegymathlete.com and there will be Joe. I love the, the Christmas uh, tree you got going in the background. Um, and you go to garagegymathlete.com, there'll be like a banner at the top of the website. Easy to access, easy to find. If you're on the email list, you'll definitely get it. Uh, but this is kind of the heads up because uh, we are doing limited quantities on a lot of things. Um, so you'll you'll know at checkout if there are any left and last year we did we didn't have like a way to tell you how many there were left it just was like they're gone sorry and uh we got a a lot of emails um asking for us to like turn it back on or like whatever but when they're gone they're gone type of thing and so a lot of that going on and it'll be good for you you can gift fitness to a friend to yourself whatever you want to do Uh, but i thought that we would um get into kind of our top three but the number one would be what would you pick from our better human friday lineup if you weren't a coach involved in the training yada 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 all that stuff so Joe, I want I want you to go first. What would you pick here of all of the offerings we have for Better Human Friday? Assuming so you had none of it. Especially for other people. But I think if you've never experienced what we do and how we train and all that, then any number of these $7 programs is what I would do. Because it's $7. You can go in there. You can check it out. They're all anywhere from four to six weeks of programs that we have. Uh, if you have... If you are on a membership, then these are the programs that are in the training center. But if not, then you pay $7 and you have this program to keep forever and you can run it, run it through. And then you can even uh, restart the program and do it again. See if you uh, see how you've improved and you can buy multiple and, you know, you can pay however much you want for $7 a pop for each program and each one you have to do. So you can probably spend like $21 and have three four, three to four months of programming. Yeah. And, and with how all inflation's with going, goals. that's going to be like the cost of a gallon of milk in a few weeks. So exactly. you're not wrong. very, very affordable fitness here. <laughs> yeah. And each of them have different uh, emphasis and goals and special specialties. And they have a little write-ups to tell you what each of them do and what you want. So yeah, it's got the, the weeks, the training days and the goal of each program, not just, Hey, here's a six week burn it all to the ground fat burner program. It's like, okay, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. We'll lay it out a little bit better. Kyle, are we going yeah. one at a time or are we going all of yeah, our I was like, I no, Yeah, we're just doing already. like your, your top pick right. one at a time and then I'll, we'll go. I'll go next. My top one, piggyback off of what Joe said, my number one is an annual membership. Just pull the trigger and do it. Pay for a year because – not only do you get the monthly programming, you can you have access to all of our tracks that we have, which also comes with a free app where you can track all your workouts, where you can also join our private Facebook community, all those kinds of things. You pay up for a year, save a ton of money off of paying month to month, which is our normal membership, save a ton of money. Also, all of the programs, the $7 programs that Joe just mentioned, you get those too. So you could either buy the one-off programs individually, or you could pay for an annual membership, get all of those one-off programs with the membership, and you get the daily programming as well that comes in the app where you can track it that way. So you get even more programming um, and you get at minimum, you get 12 months of programming, but you can do whatever you want. Um, So I would say the annual membership because it comes with all of that other stuff as well. So I went with um, somebody who's probably been around for a while. That's kind of 
my thought process behind that. So if you've been around Garage Gym Athlete for a while and you've just kind of been going through the programming, um, I challenge you to do the program design course um, and purchase that. I loved it for myself because I you get to learn all the methods behind the programming. And then I'm very much a note taker. And so I even have this from, gosh, what was this, Jared, three, four years ago. And I just refer back to it. And I love it because it just made me kind of understand our training better and um, the why behind it. And it made me a better athlete in turn. So um, yeah, the program design course is great. We go over our methods and why we train, why we program the way we program. And it's, um, it's really cool. Even if you don't want to write a program for yourself or anybody else, um, it's really, it's just good information to know. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I still have my original notes from the, the programming course as well. I did that too. I did the programming course and then I did the full cert after that, but yeah, I still have my original notes too. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you've ever had a question of, why do we do it this way? Which we talk <laughs> about it a lot on the podcast, right? Um, but at the same time, it's like, this is a really in-depth dive into, this is our methodology. This is why we do this. And and even if you're not going to coach or you're not going to write programs, like it's it's good to have that background knowledge of why you're doing what you're doing in the gym every day and the way that we program for you. Yes, it's me. If I had to pick. I guess so this... I, I, uh, that's a tough one. There's a lot, you know, it's funny. I like our programming so much that I, I mean, I'm actually I'd be like, Oh, I couldn't live without that one or this one. And <laughs> I actually feel that way. So I look at other people's programs all the time. Um, just out of curiosity, other people in the industry. And I'm just always like, God, I just couldn't do it. Like I just could never follow that program. Like, it's just, and I'm not, uh, there, I'm not going to say any specific names of other companies or competitors. Cause I don't like to throw that much shade. Cause I'm not trying to like be a downer. It's just like, man, I'd much rather do what, what we're doing, but I guess that's why we're all here. Right. But the, uh, I think if we're going just deal like Joe's approach, it might actually be a step down. If we're just kind of looking at money, you're not sure about this, whatever the six months of garage gym athlete option. So it, it brings the, cause if you were to buy every single, um, $7 program we have on here, I think we have 10 of them. So that'd be 70 bucks. Well, if you just do 37 extra dollars, you get all of those programs. Then you get all the six months, you get six months of just garage to mouthy daily programming. So that to me, that's like the sampler. It's like you spend right around a hundred and you get six months of everything. You don't get to keep those $7 programs after the fact Like it, you have to pay continuously. And that's kind of the difference between that's why we even have garage gym athletes who pay monthly still buy $7 programs because they want to keep one forever or something like that, or be able to utilize it in a different uh, capacity. So I'm thinking that's the one I would go with because if I'm just trying to like get my biggest bang for my buck without uh, any significant cost and to be honest, compared to like a lot of just say coaching and other things in the fitness industry, everything on here is very affordable. Um, but that's probably where, where I would be. Um, so all right. you just merged mine and Joe's together. Pretty much. You found the, yeah. you found the middle ground between me and Joe. Yeah. Cause, uh, you're, I mean, you're right. And I think I would push people towards annual too. It's the better deal for just looking at a per month basis. But if, uh, if we have the skeptics, anyone, skeptical that's what i would do but i also have others i'd like to recommend based off of more of ashley's approach of like <laughs> you've been here a while what should you do mm -hmm. i got i got some solid recommendations coming so uh i guess we'll just go around joe you can knock out two and three we'll all knock out our second and third two three yeah <laughs> joe didn't prepare for three <laughs> kyle, go, kyle go I ahead mean, and I, I, I kind of said 10 <laughs> of, of mine because there's that's basically what it, what it is, is all of these. Different what should ones. the veterans get? If you are uh, the veteran athlete's been around for years, what should they do? Don't take Kyle and I's points. Oh my gosh. Go what and read my mean? notes, There's, Joe. Only, we're we're so running many. out of things on the page. So you can really yeah. just like, whatever. All right. A banner. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Self, a banner. If you're a Link vet up. and you don't have a really, banner yet. Really the helping the company out there, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Because you got the garage master ones and you have the EO3 ones. And I don't even know if the EO3 ones are on our 
regular merch page. I think we only okay. sell those like this right. time of year. Mm. Secretly. Yep. Yeah. So this is the only time you can get the EO3 banners. Boom. There you go. Kyle, what you got? Um, so I kind of had a little process to my picks, the number one. So you have the the training and you have the nutrition and you have the mindset. So number one was the training. So the annual membership. Number two is the the nutrition. Ashley, I put mine first. So I know we had the same one, but I'm going to say it. So go pick another one. Um, fuels course, fuels course light. So it's um, this, this is the light version because we have the fuels course where we open it up a couple times a year and you have a coach um, uh, review it and kind of talk to you about it and give you tips and stuff like that. This is fuels course light. Uh, you just get the fuels course. A coach is not going to review it or anything, but you still get the fuels course is a very powerful tool and it teaches you, you go through specific workouts um, measuring all or, or using all the different energy systems and how you should fuel for a workout moving forward that's going to be using those energy systems if you don't know what energy systems are you will learn in the course or you should just start listening to the podcast or you should just start doing our training because we use them all the time we train them specifically fuels course light get your nutrition um, learn how to fuel for specific workouts not just nutrition in general this is for fueling specifically for your training so using your using your nutrition specifically to support your training not just generalized nutrition advice specifically using your, your nutrition for your training and then the mindset killing comfort audiobook seven bucks go pick it up you get to keep it forever get that get that mindset shift in and then those mindset reminders it's like you start slacking go back jared is telling you you need to suck it up and do better <laughs> um that's not the whole point of the book i'm just saying killing comfort Incredible book. Get the audio book. Seven bucks. Go do it. So you got your training, your nutrition, and your mindset. If you don't hear Jared's voice enough. Yeah. Right. Well, and I want to I want to clarify something on the fuels course because I think that's a great pick. The value is really there, but I think some people got confused last year of like because we named it fuels course light. They think that they might be getting something a little bit different. So Kyle said it, but that, like from an educational standpoint, the it's the exact same. Exact like you same get thing. every single thing. Um, that someone would get the only reason we charge less is because we're not doing weekly zoom calls, which is something that we do. And then you're not getting a coaching review at the end. But right. if you just listen to the three part series that we had on the, the weekend fueling, um, a couple weeks ago, then if that was at all interesting to you and you want to like, man, I'd love to master this stuff more fuels course is like a no brainer. And it's uh, very, very affordable during uh, better human Friday. So definitely jump in there. You're not getting, um, we're not giving you like when you say, maybe we should rename it and maybe it shouldn't be light. Like it's not less mm -hmm. information. It's still the exact same educational material, just a little bit less involvement with a coach. And you can still add comments in our member section and we do respond to those. It's just not a matter of direct call time from a coach because that is a, a value to all of us to to dedicate our time to something like that so that's why the the price is different as well so good pick if only ashley had thought of something like that man only. <laughs> and i was gonna say too it's progressive so we don't just drop everything on you too right it's week to week right. so it's progressive um it's really and you good. get to keep it forever so you mm -hmm. kind of like the one-off programs you can you can go and do it again like you do it now and you do a cycle or two of the training and then you go back and you do the fuel fuels course again and see, you know, if things have changed, all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a tool you get to keep forever. Yeah. All right. So my last minute uh, swerve is the digital programming side hustle. So if you, I know a lot of uh, athletes um, have maybe even started like bringing people in and training people and whatnot. And you're kind of like, man, I really enjoy this. And I want to do this as like just a side hustle. Jared is created this awesome program that my gosh, you can just learn so much from. So, um, I say, pick it up. It's, it's a fabulous deal. It's a whole heck of a lot off. So, um, and it's, it's tried and true guys. Um, it's, it's really great, uh, from someone who, you know, I didn't really charge anything, but like who trained people when we, I was at Lake and Heath and whatnot, like this is, this is a cool way to, um, set you up. And it's not just training, right. It's like, telling you how to grow a business, what you need to start with. Um, 
anyways, it's really cool. I can't speak highly enough of it. Yeah. And uh, multiple, I was just gonna say multiple people have gone through the coaching course and then done the digital programming side hustle. And we've had more than one, multiple people start six figure businesses, launch six figure businesses within about, you know, anywhere from 12 to 18 months post following the digital programming side hustle. So, I mean, if business is kind of your thing, you're, you're dabbling, or if you think it's going to be, yeah, like get it while it's a deal. It's uh, just because we discounted it doesn't mean it's not, you know, uh, powerful information. For sure. And then my last month would be, I figured I'd had to pick a training one since I haven't picked training. I was say, you wanted to educate the world. I, <laughs> I think it's great. Anyways, uh, my training one would be one man system. I talk about it all the time. I use this all the time when we're gone, when we're traveling, like one man system is like, I would say it's, it's probably my favorite out of all the systems. I know I probably shouldn't say that, but anyways, um, I think it's great. I think it's good. If you're stop shaking your head, Kyle, one man, one barbell is always the tried and true, but, um, one man system is great. Uh, and if you just want to work on body weight stuff too, like it's, it's fabulous. Um, I, I've said this a million times on the podcast. I use that Tabata all the time. If I am somewhere and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I just go back to the one man system and then do it. So yeah. All right, Jared, give us yeah, your mo- last two. Most of them have been covered at this point. Uh, <laughs> so I just have to kind of pick what's left. Um, and, and this is for the, the veteran members. Uh, we had a good amount of people do this last year. A lifetime of garage gym athlete. <laughs> so it's you pay once. Um, it will be a little bit more expensive this year than it was last year, but still you pay once and then you are done paying for garage gym athlete for the rest of your life or until we shut the business Forever. down at the end of December. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, that, that's the funny part is like, how long is life? I, we actually got that question last year. It's like, well, I'm not going anywhere. Like, are, are you, mm-hmm. um, I hope I don't get hit by a car or whatever, um, truck. So yeah, you, you pay this fee and then you're done with uh, monthly membership. Uh, we almost had too many people take it down, take us up on this last year. So we had to shut it down. Um, so if this is like, this is the one we're getting the most questions about. Like if this is in your radar, in your sites, be ready. Cause it's going to go fast. There will be a limited quantity and like an auto shutdown, um, with how many we have. So if you want to do the lifetime of garage gym athlete, definitely do that. Um, and then I think, what do I have left here? I think you went with one man system. I was going to do kind of one of those, um, I'll do both. I'll just finish them out. I mean, I would snag the one man series. If, if I, uh, if, if you're at all interested, we talked about one man, one barbell today in the study, or I did a little bit there. One man, one kettlebell, one man system. I think all of these programs are great to have for various reasons. Ashley mentioned for like traveling, the one man system is awesome. Uh, one man, one kettlebell, kind of the same thing. If you're in a situation where you can travel and you also have access to a kettlebell, cause they're just short, they're three week waves with a deload. So, I mean, you can do one week of it, two weeks of it. Uh, and I, I know people find themselves in those situations. You of course could always do what we have in the app or like no gear track or something with garage gym athlete. Uh, and then one man, one man, one barbell, um, is just super effective strength training program. It's good to, good to have, but not just from, um, Oh, well, I want to do this instead of garage gym athlete type thing. It's, it's very educational, almost too educational. Like I could probably turn one man, one barbell more into a course. Um, and there's a lot of that in there. So I say that almost as a warning, if you want to buy it, (laughs) because, um, I really want to make sure it's like, we call them like systems for a reason and not just, Oh, here's day one, week one. Like it is a system. You will get educated. You will understand strength training better, the implementation of it, and you'll kind of know the framework to be able to use it. Uh, so it's really solid overall. Um, but if you're again, kind of going the more educational route, any of those programs would be great for you. So that's it. Better human Friday, go to garage and snag any of the things that we have mentioned for a very limited time. Free ask your spouse about the lifetime thing, because that happened last time. It was like on Friday or Saturday, it came out and they were like, Oh, I had to talk to my spouse, but they didn't get back to me until Sunday night. And by then we were just like, Whoa, sold out of it. How long does it take to talk to you? You guys pencil in a meeting? Like, I don't... <laughs> well, apparently Sometimes. Ashley has to make flow charts <laughs> and, <laughs> and do all the, all the, all the budget breakdowns. So I may, um, talking about me. 
I thought I thought you you had uh, proposed things like that before. Maybe it was Jerry. Somebody I thought. I have I have to no, come. I'm going to ask with a for forgiveness, yes. not permission. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, have you ever seen any mark? of those memes that it's like, give, <laughs> give us an extra five bucks and we'll give you a receipt for how much you told your wife you paid for it. Yeah. I have yeah. No. Well, that's, I'm going to start. I was that saying business. it. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel like Emily wouldn't be upset with you. I don't know. I, you're right, Joe. I do have to come at everything with a logical <laughs> explanation. It can't be an emotional purchase for Scott. Anyways, he's probably going to kill me for saying that, but anyways, we do. Yeah. Budget meetings. And so, yes, you're right. I have to have like spreadsheets. Of, this is great because of this. <laughs> How much money will we actually save in the purchase? It's like, it's like shopping at Costco <laughs> hmm. costs a little more up oh. front. Oh, but can't they wait. circle the savings <laughs> at the bottom. Or <laughs> well, no, like we're, we're getting to the point with three kids, two boys who are getting, they, I swear they eat more calories than I do. And it bothers me. Um, <laughs> It's gonna get I, worse. Eat, I eat a lot of calories. I mean, I eat like probably 3,500 a day, just but like the on amount average. That they're burning because they're still growing. Like they got to be easily on the 5K, 5,000. We talked calories about this on the podcast, the energy expenditure. <laughs> they're still in that, you know, that but slip. they're they little have, humans. They haven't they're, leveled like they're off. They're still growing, dude. <laughs> yeah. They haven't yeah, leveled off. Play yet. football for Texas Tech. You doesn't matter until they get to 20, right? <laughs> right. At 20, they level off. I'm, I really want to see, I'm, William might be like six five or six six. We'll see. He started tower basketball you, last dude. night. He, he had a what? So he's gonna tower over you. I know, and I'm. It'll be weird. Um, but I I tell them every time. I'm like, look, you're both probably gonna be taller than me, because <laughs> we fed you good food and you had a good upbringing, better than mine. Um, and <laughs> I will always be stronger than you. <laughs> oh my gosh and they, they just they look at it as a challenge like even seven and nine year olds they're like okay we'll see i'm like no we will see you will <laughs> never be stronger than me and they're they kind of accepted it for a while but now it is more of a challenge and they're like oh well i think i think we could probably be stronger but are they me. stronger than a geo metro or more powerful why wow. not i wasn't what ready to move on my <laughs> what a segue ashley <laughs> But I guess we could talk about our Thanksgiving tradition, <laughs> which is there is no real Thanksgiving, right, Joe? It's like it's a meal in between okay. Christmas. No, <laughs> right? Thanksgiving is a fantastic holiday. It is part oh, okay. of Christmas. Now. We're not doing there, this. We're not doing one. this on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a huge tangent. So this. let's keep going. <laughs> so what's funny is we have, I don't know how many traditions we have at Garage Gym Athlete, but there is one. And this is it. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> this, this is, is one. It. We don't have a lot of traditions Murph, here. Murph is the other tradition. Eh, that's well, like that's it's, just, that's on like, Memorial Day. We always do that's, like that's, that's not weekend. our tradition. Though. That's not yeah, a GTA like, thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. To okay. be honest, up until like more recently, I would forget to program Murph around Memorial Day because it was just like when I was doing it every week, I didn't think <laughs> of like Memorial Day as like a special time to do it because I was just doing it every single week. It's just a typical Saturday. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, uh, oh yeah, I should probably program that for everybody. But uh, this is it. This is the tradition. It's the Thanksgiving throwdown. Who wants to brief the workout? Kyle, you got it. Oh, I've got it. There okay, we go. Okay, cool. There we go. The Geo Metro Challenge. 15 handstand push-ups, 10 cleans at 135 or 95, 10 strict pull-ups, 20 deadlifts at 135 or 95, 25 push-ups, 15 back squats at 135, 95. All reps must be unbroken. Mm -hmm. And if you complete this whole workout in three minutes and 36 seconds or less, you are more powerful than a Geo Metro. 337 to four minutes, you are mm -hmm. as powerful as a Geo Metro. That's my favorite rating. <laughs> anything, anything over four minutes, even anything over four minutes flat, and you are less powerful than a Geo Metro. <laughs> go get it done um i guess since i briefed it i'll do my notes first wait should we talk about what a geo metro is yeah do some people not know what a geo metro is there might be oh, some yeah, like, yeah. people i guess we're getting New to the people point out here I guess okay so point. i have to tell the story and i'll tell it briefly it's even in like the article i think i, I wrote for this but I had this idea. Uh, I was when I first started programming uh, for a lot of people. Like I was doing all sorts of math, like equating things to horsepower and everything else, and like just trying to figure out what data was useful and wasn't useful. And then I came up with the idea. I was like, I want to have a workout, you know, where like 
you know, you're more powerful than like a Ferrari or like something really awesome. And then I was like, actually calculated things out. And I was like, Oh, humans kind of suck. Um, <laughs> we, we can't do much at all uh, when it comes to horsepower. That's why they never put carts on people's backs. They put on horses backs. It's not and, human power. Yeah. It's not human power. And so anyway, once I got, it, it became more, it can't be funny at that point i was like okay so we can't do any cool cars like what's the worst car out there and uh, i kind of landed on the geo metro which is a three cylinder which i think is like illegal now um three cylinder car one liter um engine and the horsepower is like 55 to 79 um me, me. 46 <laughs> miles per gallon highway though all right yeah. who's laughing now <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so anyway the that's the that's the math I came out with after calculating a bunch of stuff. It's like, okay, if you want to be more powerful than Geo Metro, uh, then here's the workout to be able to do it. So, and it's still, it's, it's pretty challenging. So yeah, now tips, strategies for the workout. So I said, make sure to remember all reps are unbroken. You have to just go straight through it. And honestly, hopefully, I mean, according to our standards, you're, not taking more than four minutes to do this so you should just be able to crank through it unbroken but everything has to be unbroken all out just go for it um i would say since this is our thanksgiving tradition right do this before eating for the day just knock it out it's only a four minute workout so do it before you go eat everything um oh, we're we program it on saturday though right it's a meet yourself saturday or do we program it for thanksgiving no it's for saturday you can okay. do it on Thanksgiving if you so want. So it's after Thanksgiving anyway. All right. Anyway, whatever. Do it before you do anything for the day because it's only four minutes long. And extra points if you compete against an actual Geo Metro. <laughs> if like you can actually find one out in the wild. If you can actually outrun a Geo Metro, extra points. Oh my god! You still have to do the workout. It's not. No, it this, this is about power, not speed. So you, <laughs> what think, you would do is plant your feet in front of the car and see if you can hold it in place while the other person steps on the gas pedal. I guess I just thought. Good luck. You know, <laughs> I guess oh. I just thought. You know, your your power off the line. Like, can you beat a Geo Metro off the line? I shared and this with for someone. a short distance. I share this with someone. I don't remember where. It was, I think it had to be in Russia because that's just where these things happen. There was this guy that was like crouched down in between two cars, and these cars' hoods were pointed at each other in between him, and they 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 drove at each other with the guy in between the cars. What? And he just kind of he just kind of crouched down there and held the cars so that they didn't crush him. So the Geo Metros. <laughs> that's where all the Geo Metros the went. Is. Yeah, that's probably where they went. They all wound up in Russia. Russia. <laughs> This is this is our new tradition. All right, we're doing this one, the, mm -hmm. the between you, you the first. between two cars. You first. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, who's next? Yeah, I don't know who's next. I, I guess you want to be. Okay. Um, I mean, you have to warm up for this one. That's like the main thing because everything's unbroken, so you have to make everything count. So if you're going to do any reps, you better start and finish those. And if you don't, then you're probably not as powerful as a geometric or as, or more powerful. Um, so yeah, it do a very long warm up. You can do a mock trial through of the whole thing. Like do like half or quarter reps of each of them, moving from one to the next and just stay loose, take a, take a nice break and then hammer it out. Well, Jared, since we're talking about auto regulation um don't look at this workout and go well i can't do handstand push-ups and i can't do any of this you can scale all the things that you need to think down to what you need to right so even with the weight um and then i just said go with this ignore the pain there's only one button for this one and that's go um and maybe find a song that's like less than four minutes so that way it can keep you on target if you're trying to be more powerful than a geo metro or i mean you can go with jared's favorite rating right smack dab in the middle <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's just such a depressing rating. Right, as powerful <laughs> like, as the I, I would, I'd rather win or lose this this battle, not <laughs> not tie. Uh, okay, so for me, tips on this one. I don't like workouts like this where it's like three minutes and done or whatever. You know, that it reminds me too much of CrossFit. Um, so it's like a lot of a lot of hoopla for a little tiny thing. So, like Joe said. Uh, warm up 
appropriately. Knock this out. Make sure you're more powerful than a Geo Metro. Maybe you won't be. Don't be depressed if you're not. It's fine. And then go for a 5K run after. Um, especially if it's Thanksgiving. A lot of people do 5K runs on Thanksgiving and or around Thanksgiving. So yeah, five. If uh, bonus points if you throw the EO3 5K on the on the back end of it. Ooh. Um, wow. Wow. I mean, Next do you feel level. like you've done anything after a three minute workout? No, I was going to say maybe do some zone two stuff, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> EO3 5K. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, zone two 5K. That, that's like a normal Thursday. It's good to go. Yeah. I mean, EO3 5K right after. Oh, gosh. If you can so you complete use the Metro challenge as your warm up for the 5K. Yeah. If you can do saying? the Geo Metro throwdown and be more powerful and finish the EO3 5K. All of that in under an hour. I will Ooh. give you a dollar. <laughs> an actual dollar. He's Not anybody milk. listening, just the three of you. He's gonna <laughs> <laughs> So we get money. <laughs> well, I'm out because uh, I I'm quickly doing... changed my mind on the dollar challenge yeah. after I realized how many people listen to the podcast. A lot of emails. Um, I did it. We need video proof, and you also have to survive the Geo Metro crushing test. Okay, there we go. There's I'm out because I'm not doing high intensity, so you only got to give two dollars. <laughs> All right, no, Joe. I mean, if I need to do it. Yeah, Joe. Joe won't do it. I mean, come on, let's be real. All right, Kyle, it's up to you, my friend. It's all on my shoulders. I won't be able to anyway. I mean, I'm not going to be at my gym or any gym. Mm, sad day. Um, all right. Well, I guess we can get out of here. It, being that it's Thanksgiving week, um, don't get lazy. Or, all right. Or gorge don't, yourself. Yeah, don't do it. It's just another meal. It's it's not like a. Don't. I'm gonna get angry. I'll get angry if we sit here and talk. Here about he goes. It. So don't <laughs> ruin your life on Thanksgiving. Okay. It's not worth it. It's just another meal, but enjoy yourself. Have fun, but don't No, seriously. And, and as Jared said, you maybe don't give thanks at some point. Anything. Oh yeah. You don't, you don't deserve a, a larger Extra than normal five. meal. Yeah. yeah. Like it just, it makes me feel bad. So I can't like, that's the reason I do it. I just want to, not feel bad so don't don't do it have fun work out on thanksgiving and uh, then wake up the next day and crush better human friday for all of those who support the podcast either following us on the podcast and youtube and leaving the reviews we really appreciate it following the daily programming we really appreciate that as well if you really want to support what we're doing whether you are a member of garage and math or not definitely check out better better human friday uh, this Friday and, uh, you know, snag a program or two, give a program away, share with a friend, whatever you want to do, uh, check all those things out. Um, but that's all I have for this week. And for my weekly reminder, if you don't kill comfort, comfort will kill you. Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.